the first thing I say to people that don't take this virus seriously is whether or not the virus affects you has nothing to do with how you feel about the virus. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, this virus affects all people regardless of race, religion, or personal belief. I want to acknowledge for a minute that we all have COVID fatigue. Even the people that have been doing this day in and day out since this pandemic hit America are tired. The difference is we know we just can't give up, especially since we are so close to the end of this pandemic. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel. So it's even more disheartening to see that people are giving up right now when we're so close to our chances to get back to normal. The best way to keep your community safe is to take care of yourself and your neighbors. That means to get tested when you feel unwell and to do the right thing with the results. If you find out you're positive, please stay home and tell your contacts. If you find out you're negative, please continue to wear a mask, stay distant, and wash your hands. The only way to stop the spread of this virus is to prevent it from getting into other people. As a friend of mine said, the virus can't infect you if it can't find you. Our hospitals have been overwhelmed on and off since this pandemic started. Unfortunately, a lot of the hospitals that are getting hardest hit right now are the ones that had the least number of resources to start, our rural hospitals. I think we didn't spend enough time talking about what the effects of this virus would be in rural America, where there are just fewer ICU beds and fewer ICU caretakers. There are fewer nurses, fewer doctors, and fewer respiratory therapists. It seems like the most important issue facing the hospitalization of patients in this third wave is actually going to be staff. Because unlike the previous two waves, we could actually move staff from one city to another. It's every state in the union that's being hit at the same time. And areas that thought that they could send staff now can't because we, like for example in New York, are starting to see a doubling and probably a tripling in the number of patients being admitted to our hospitals with this virus. So we're still seeing PPE shortages, especially in areas that are getting hardest hit because you know, even if you prepare with the appropriate amount of gloves and gowns and respirators, when you start to see more patients, you use more PPE. The thing is that there have been nonprofits set up to solve this problem. And I think a lot of the reason that it's quieted down is because we've seen innovation in this space. We've also seen more preparation and better redundancy so that we could see lending of PPE from one community to another. But again, it's gonna hit a breaking point and we need to be careful. We need to invest in those resources and prepare and protect each other. So a lot of people ask me, why have deaths gone down when the number of cases have gone up? Why has the proportion changed? And really, it's mostly related to the kind of patient that gets infected now. So in the very beginning of the pandemic, we saw a lot of elderly and a lot of vulnerable people get infected at the very, very beginning. Now we're seeing younger and healthier people get infected and they are gonna do better than the older or more vulnerable patients. And also we are slightly better at uh, taking care of this virus. We know a little bit more about how to treat it. We don't have any cures right now. The other thing was that our hospital systems were not overwhelmed. So we are seeing, unfortunately, that death rate go up now as our hospitals get more overwhelmed and we have less resources. So the best way to save every life from this virus is to keep our elderly and immune compromised safe, to decrease the number of patients who are infected, and to make sure that our hospitals are open and able to take care of all patients that have this virus. So the recent vaccine news is very encouraging. In fact, I'd say it's even exciting. We don't yet have the primary data from any of the vaccine uh, companies about what exactly they've proven with their phase three trials, but we should see that information soon. So I am gonna wait and see so that I can ask my trusted vaccine scientist friends about whether or not this data is as good as they say it is. But if it is as good as it, say, it says it is, then this is an extraordinary vaccine that has a really good chance at helping us basically eradicate this virus from our daily lives. It will still be there, it will be in the background, and we will still need to take some precautions. But for the most part, it will help us get past this at this moment of the pandemic.
Unfortunately, we've seen a lot of states, especially in the Midwest, not implement the safety procedures we know work, like mask mandates and limits on distancing and really prioritizing working from home if possible. People in those states wonder, what can I do to keep myself safe? And the answer is protect yourself and your family as best as you can. If you are an essential worker like me and you have to go to work, wear a mask. You can even wear eye protection. Stay home when you're not at work. Make sure that you're not unnecessarily gathering with anybody not in your nuclear family. And if you feel unwell, please go get tested and do the right thing with those results, even if it means, unfortunately, having to take some time off of work unpaid. The most important thing you can do to keep your family safe this holiday season is please just stay with your nuclear family and video chat with everybody else. If your college student is coming home, let them come home, let them quarantine, be tested, and they should stay home for the rest of the holiday season. We know a lot of colleges are saying, if you go home for Thanksgiving, please don't come back. Stay home and work remotely. Learn remotely so that we can keep our students safe. We really don't want to see a lot of holiday travel. I know that it's really a departure from how we expect the holiday season, but again, we are so close to the likely end of this pandemic. It's just this last few weeks that we need to stay strong and stay apart just so we can spend the next holiday season together. If you are planning on traveling for the holiday season, despite our pleas not to, and you decide to get tested, remember that you're going to get tested not to test yourself to get cleared if you're negative, but to test yourself to find out if you're positive. We need people that find out they're positive through screening at the holiday season to please change their plans and stay home. If you do test before your travel and you're negative, please still do use the best practices for public health. It means wearing a mask when you travel, testing again when you get to your destination, and staying as far apart from other people as much as you can. Please even consider wearing a mask inside if you're staying with people that don't live with your nuclear family. Unfortunately, and I live in a cold weather climate in New York, uh, the freedom we had over the summer with outdoor gatherings at restaurants or on balconies outside, is just going to go away in the winter. And unfortunately, that's really going to mean we're just not going to be able to gather the same way. What I would say is if you can get a heater and sit outside, get some blankets and a big coat, you can still try to stay outside and gather. If you're going to be inside, it's just really not safe to sit with people that aren't in your family. If you are going to be inside, you want to be on opposite ends of the table, 10 probably feet apart, and you really want to minimize the time that you're unmasked. Maybe you stay inside and don't eat and drink together and just sit there and have a chat, but do it really from far away and please keep your mask on if you're inside. 